Hello everybody, this is Carlos from Army of Nurses and welcome to another video. In today's video, I'm going to show you and demonstrate how to administer a intramuscular uh, injection. We're going to use our same case from, uh, from Mr. MT. And let's say that now he's feeling a bit nauseous. So as you can see at the very bottom, right, he has been ordered diamond hydronate, 25 to 50 milligrams intramuscularly uh, every six hours as needed uh, for nausea. So he's feeling nauseous, so we're going to give him the, uh, the diamond hydronate. All right. So first things first, um, remember we have our three medication checks that are uh, separate from your eight rights. So, uh huh we have the uh, gravel here. Now, this is the part that knowing the generic name and the brand name uh, comes in handy. Uh, this one, as you can all see, I made it up myself, uh, obviously. So we know that Diamond Hydronate is the generic name for gravel. And as you can see in here, 50 milligrams is equivalent to one milliliter. So if I want to give the patient 25 milligrams, because remember, from the order, he can have either 25 to 50, right? Um, this is the part you're gonna use your judgment uh, a little bit, okay? But let's say that I decided to go with 50 milligrams. So if I'm gonna give him 50 milligrams, it means I'm gonna give him, I'm gonna drop one milliliter from the ampule, all right? Now, we we did our first check once we drew our medication. So here it is, I'm gonna put the order set over there. Next, we're going to grab some of our supplies. So as an intramuscular injection, you are going to need a syringe. You are gonna give a needle to administer the medication and for intramuscular uh, injections usually uh, make sure that your needle is at least a number 22 as you can see right over here okay and they're usually denoted by this little black uh, by the black shaft over here you will notice uh, if you uh, pay attention that the little shaft it changes in color based on the gauge of the needle okay so in this case the 22 it's this little black color and these are for uh, intramuscular administration i will show you also these uh the blunt needles uh, these ones these ones here the, we don't use them to give the medication to the patient we use this to draw it up from the vials and the reason why is it makes it a little easier because this needle it's bigger okay now there's a reason why the cap is red just tell yourself that when you see if this needle is attached to your syringe like this, right? And you are, for some reason, you're forgetting and you have to give this medication to the patient intramuscularly, tell yourself that the red cap is red because if you inject the patient with this needle, which is huge, you're gonna get a bloody mess, okay? So that's, a, that's one way for you to remember that this needle here, the red one, the blunt needle, is not to inject the patient. That's why you have this one, all right? So I'm gonna show you both, okay? So we're gonna perform hand hygiene. And now this is the part where the ampules that if you are a nursing student or you uh, don't deal with ampules very frequently, there is a technique to kind of do this. So you're gonna see that this almost looks like a little Coke bottle. Like, uh, you know, how you have the neck and uh, over here and you have the body. So the technique is that you're gonna use your thumb, okay? And you're gonna put your thumb right here on the neck. Your index finger is going to come up here. So the action that you want to do is something like this. You see how my thumb is gonna push and my index finger is gonna pull. So when one pulls and the other one push, I expect this to break like this, correct? The part of the top is gonna break like that, all right? So uh, if you're a nursing student and you're doing this for the first time or you're doing this for a return demonstration, for example, and you're going to be extremely nervous at that point, uh, one thing to remember is uh, do not squeeze, okay? Because when you squeeze, this part is gonna shatter, and do nursing students cut themselves or even nurses cut themselves with this? Absolutely, yes, 
and it, and this is actually glass okay so uh, you will cut yourself if you're not careful alternatively you can use a piece of gauze and you can do this as well you can cover it but it's still using the same technique right you see my thumb it's just under the gauze right here and my index finger is just under the gauze and you can use this to break it open now because this ampule here is for practice only it doesn't have the little dot and what do i mean by little dot right on the neck some ampules you're going to find that it has a little dot that little dot it tells you that it's already pre there is a little crack a little microscopic crack on that dot and it's telling you that that dot needs to face outward because if there's already a crack on this side then it's going to help us it's going to help us when we do this correct that means that if there is the crack over here is already uh, present from the vial when we do this the likelihood of this opening cleanly is much higher all right but this one doesn't have uh the 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 dot but the principle is the same all right also what you're going to be doing is as you can see there is some medication up here right so you always want to make sure that this amount of medication comes down into your vial because if you are uh grabbing let's say two milliliters of this medication but then one milliliter is stuck up here you will not have enough down here to uh, administer your medication so let's make sure give a little flick or just give a little shake until there's no medication up here all right so we're going to watch uh, very closely i'm going to put this over and this is going to be in a split of a second okay so pay attention ready one two three Then we're just going to crack open the uh, the medication. All right. Again, our same technique. There it goes. All right. So you can see, we crack the medication open. And don't be. Uh, sometimes what you're going to find is that there's some rock, uh, some rock edges around. But make sure you don't cut yourself with that. Okay. So this little piece here, like I say goes into the sharp container and now that we crack this open we're going to do our second check yes this is gravel 50 milligrams per milliliter and we're going to show you the two techniques okay so we're going to open our syringe and we're going to open our blunt needle now this blunt needles over here you see this little part is a filter so these filters are specifically designed for ampules because when we crack our ampules sometimes just microscopic pieces of glass at the bottom so what this red what this red needle with the filter and i stress that there is the, the one with the filter because there's some uh blunt needles that they come like this only without the purple part okay so this one the purple part has the filter so the whole purpose of this is when you draw your medication up, it's going to filter the, the microscopic glass particles so that you don't obviously don't inject that into your patient. Okay, so what you're going to do is uh, one of the differences also that you're going to notice compared to the uh, vials from insulin from the previous video, we don't need to put air in because this is not sealed, right? You can see it's actually open to air. So this is not a vacuum. You can just put your needle in. And we're just gonna drop the one milliliter of gravel, okay? So you can see that. You can go slowly. Now I'm gonna show you another technique. Let's say that you need to get every single piece of or every single drop of medication in there. Now we're lucky that this needle is actually long enough to reach the bottom so that we can grab everything sometimes the vials are a little bigger or the needles are smaller and when you put your needle in this is as far in that you're going to get so how can you get the bottom of the medication if that's the case well don't be afraid to do this okay you see how i'm tipping over the i'm tipping over and i just keep pulling on this side Remember, the tip of the needle is where you get the medication. That's the only part. Tell yourself that part. Remember that part. Okay? Voila. And as you can see, I have gotten every single bit of the medication uh, from this 
okay but that was just for demonstration purposes so because so I'm gonna put this back in okay and we can show you that again and we're just gonna draw the one milliliter that we intended initially for our example so let's pull that back up again now because I'm using a blunt needle you want to draw a little bit more than one okay now and the reason why is because the needle before we actually drew the medication it has air in it and you can see the air of the needle is right here right so you're gonna give a little flick to make sure that the air bubble goes up and as you can see I have drawn a little bit more than one milliliter on it and I'm gonna tell you why so we're gonna do our scooping again same scooping technique right so we can now that we've drawn the medication we check yes it is gravel 50 milligrams per milliliter so we're going to put our vial here and this is the part that we're going to use this needle here to administer for the patient now this needle being brand new there's air inside right i mean it's brand new so imagine what would happen if we only drew one milliliter and then when we put the needle in there we have to prime the needle you will not have one milliliter in there and that's the reason why we draw just a tiny tiny little bit more oops sorry tiny tiny little bit more and then you want to pull this up and you as you can see this needle looks different it's smaller but it's way sharper so please be careful not to poke yourselves okay now you want to find that it is not at one correct but let's prime the needle and by priming the needle you're supposed to see medication come up from it once medication starts coming out from it you see how i am exactly at one right now right because i have used the extra little bit of medication that i drew early to make sure that this the air in the needle gets primed so that obviously the patient gets the right amount all right now this type of needle we're going to same thing the, the technique that we're going to use is to scoop this up okay again you put it in and then now this medication is ready to get administered for the patient so let me throw some of this away now we have mr. MT again for so we're going to wash our hands before we go into see Mr. MT, right? And we are going to put on our gloves because remember we're going in to see the patient and we're going to interact with the with the patient. Okay. Uh, all right. Mr. MT, my name is Carlos. I'm gonna be giving you your medications uh, for the nausea. Okay, it's gonna be gravel, and we're going to give it uh, as an intramuscular injection. So in this case. Uh, we're going to give it on the deltoid, okay? So the deltoid is the most common site for intramuscular in, uh, injections. Since it's only one milliliter, it is definitely acceptable to do uh, to go there. If you have injections that are larger than one milliliter, then you should start thinking about either the vastus lateralis site or you should start thinking about the ventrogluteal site for administration of that, all right? We are going to be choosing the deltoid as the site for administration for the intramuscular uh, injection. And once we have lead marked the deltoid properly, so you're going to find a chromium process, three fingers uh, below the chromium process, and you're going to uh, inject the medication there. We are going to assess the site as well. Uh, make sure that again, same thing, that there is no bruising, there is no open areas, there is no uh dermatological conditions there's no moles in there so in this case the delta side looks good okay so perfect so we're going to grab our alcohol swab we're going to give it a little clean and for ims uh you're going to do something different than subcutaneous instead of pinching the skin you're going to spread the skin when giving uh, intramuscular injections okay because you're trying to create something called a z track so the z track what it does it it stretches the skin so that after you give your medication and when you let go of the skin the skin is going to retract and it's going to create a natural seal so the medication doesn't leak out uh, out of it okay all right so we clean it already and we're going to take out our needle 
it's over here. We're going to spread the skin, okay? As you can see, I'm trying to spread it. You're going to go 90 degrees. For uh, intramuscular injections, you always go 90 degrees. And then you inject one, two, three. Now, once you have injected uh, the needle into the patient, there's a variance here. Some hospitals uh, require you to pull back on the plunger to see if there's any blood return. Now, if you pull back and you see, imagine that this bubble here is blood, okay? Then your whole medication will be contaminated and you will have to discard everything and start anew. Some hospitals don't require you to pull back to start to check for a blood return. Uh, once you inject the, the uh, once you put the needle in, you can just put on the medication. So those are the two variances. Okay, so we're gonna push the medication in, and once the plunger hits the bottom, then that's when you're gonna start counting one, two, three, four, five. Then you're going to pull out and let go of the skin. Okay. Now remember that once you have given the medication to the patient, the needles do not get recapped again because this needle is contaminated already. It touched the patient, okay? This is the final and we're just gonna completely close it over. Okay, so this goes into the sharps container. After we have given the medication to Mr. MT, we're going to assess how he's doing. Let him know that the site might be a little bit sore because of the injection. We're going to make sure there's no uh, blood, there's no bleeding after our IM. Sometimes a little norm, uh, it's, it's common for it to be just a very scant amount of blood, which is why I recommend that you early to have your little piece of gauze uh, earlier, just so that in case your patient has a little bit of bleeding, then you can just put a little gauze uh, on it, okay? Uh, we're going to come back and check on the patient again to make sure that the nausea has gotten better, that it's not persistent. And at this point, we're going to remove our gloves. We're going to perform hand hygiene, right? And then we can document that we administer the gravel to the patient, okay? So in a nutshell, that is the technique to administer intramuscular injections. Uh, if you have any questions, leave in the comments below and I'll see you in our next video. Bye for now.